Hi, Fast Recaps here. Today I will explain a 2016 supernatural horror film titled The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Spoilers ahead. Sit back and enjoy. The movie opens with a depiction of a residence where a horrific crime has taken place. The house was the site of a brutal massacre, resulting in the death of an entire family. Despite this, law enforcement discovered no evidence of forced entry. By examining the bloodstain patterns, the police deduced that the victims had made desperate attempts to flee. Following an extensive investigation, the authorities eventually uncovered the corpse of a young woman concealed beneath the house's basement. Due to the police's inability to ascertain the identity of the female cadaver and establish any familial connection to the murdered family, they officially designated the body as Jane Doe. The scene then transitions to Austin Tilden, a coroner who collaborates with his father, Tommy, as they conduct an autopsy on a deceased individual in the basement of their home. The corpse looks completely burnt. While conducting the autopsy, Tommy quizzes Austin about the cause of death. Austin thinks the man has died because of inhaling too much smoke in the fire. But Tommy explains that the evidence is not strong enough to support that hypothesis. Upon further investigation, they find evidence of brain damage and conclude that the man probably fell and hit his head. Tommy then instructs Austin to tidy up everything and leaves the room. While putting the body in a drawer and finishing some paperwork, Austin is distracted by a cat, Stanley, who has brought a dead rat. In the following scene, Austin is washing his hands when he hears a sound, he goes to investigate. He is startled when his girlfriend, Emma, surprises him from behind. Emma is here to take him out for some quality time together. Austin then escorts Emma to the autopsy room, where she enters for the first time and expresses her curiosity to see one of the bodies there. Austin does not like the idea, but Tommy enters the room and grants permission for Emma to observe one of the unautopsied bodies. Upon seeing the corpse, Emma is surprised to see a bell fastened to its leg. Tommy explains that in the past, coroners would affix bells to bodies as a precautionary measure to ensure they were truly deceased and not in a state of coma or suspended animation. Just as Austin and Emma are preparing to depart, a police officer arrives carrying the body of Jane Doe and informs Tommy that the police requires the cause of death by the following day. The officer urges Tommy to conduct the autopsy as soon as possible. In order to assist his father and expedite the autopsy procedure, Austin decides to postpone his plans with Emma, assuring her that they will meet later that night. Meanwhile, the police officer discloses to Tommy a peculiar detail regarding Jane Doe's body, her fingerprints cannot be found in the database. Unexpectedly, Tommy's pet cat enters the room and inexplicably growls at the lifeless Jane Doe. Once the police officer departs, Tommy and Austin promptly commence the autopsy process, adhering to their customary practice of listening to the radio. Austin proceeds to capture a photograph of Jane Doe's body and provides an estimation of her age, determining her to be in her 20s. Tommy meticulously examines every inch of Jane Doe's body. He does not find any scars, bruises, or signs of bleeding. However, an anomaly catches his attention when he inspects her eyes. Unlike the typical clear eyeballs observed in recently deceased individuals, Jane Doe's eyeballs appear cloudy. However, the overall state of the corpse suggests that her demise had recently occurred. Tommy and Austin proceed to uncover several irregularities during their examination of Jane Doe's remains. The skin does not exhibit any signs of paleness, the joints lack stiffness, and the proportions of the hips do not align with the rest of her body, a discrepancy Tommy attributes to genetics. To facilitate the analysis of the cause of death, Austin records all the observed conditions on the blackboard. Tommy proceeds to inspect the hands and feet of the body and makes a startling discovery. The bones in her wrists and ankles have been crushed, despite the absence of any visible external trauma. Austin carefully cleans the dirt from beneath Jane Doe's nails and hair. However, upon further investigation, they realize that the dirt does not match the soil found at the location where the corpse was discovered. Instead, it originates from a northern region. Upon learning that Jane Doe's tongue has been severed, Tommy deduces that she was a victim of human trafficking, subjected to both physical restraint and the heinous act of tongue removal. Further examination leads Tommy to find an object lodged in Jane Doe's throat, which turns out to be a thread. Additionally, he observes that one of her molars has been extracted. Wasting no time, after completing the external examination, Tommy and Austin promptly proceed to examine the internal organs. Just as they were about to begin the surgery, the radio station abruptly switched to an old 1950s song, but Tommy and Austin paid no mind to it. Once the surgery was completed, Tommy once again encounters peculiarities within the body. The lungs appear blackened, resembling the aftermath of third-degree burns, and the internal organs display multiple lacerations and scar tissue. While engrossed in their examination, they are startled by the sound of an object falling. Austin ventures outside to investigate, meticulously searching every room. 
he catches a glimpse of someone standing in the hallway through a mirror's reflection. However, upon reaching the hallway, he finds no trace of anyone present. Undeterred, Austin proceeds to another room and eventually arrives at a warehouse, where an eerie sound emanates from within. Austin then checks the air register, suspecting that the strange sound may be coming from there. Startled by something, he stumbles and falls. Tommy follows his son, and together they discover their pet cat severely injured. Tommy, acknowledging the cat's suffering, puts an end to its pain by euthanizing it. They resume the autopsy procedure, uncovering the presence of Jimson weed, a plant known to induce paralysis, in Jane Doe's stomach. Additionally, Tommy locates a small package containing Jane Doe's missing molar. Upon closer examination, they make a startling discovery, a cloth wrapper adorned with peculiar Roman numerals, letters, and diagrams. Tommy proceeds to skin Jane Doe's body, revealing similar symbols inscribed beneath her skin. Simultaneously, the radio in the autopsy room experiences frequency disruptions, and all the lights suddenly explode, plunging the room into darkness. Austin quickly illuminates the area with a flashlight, eventually locating his father. However, their astonishment mounts as they realize that all the corpses in the drawers have vanished. Tommy and Austin promptly make the decision to evacuate the premises without delay. However, upon reaching the elevator, they discover it is inoperable, and a fallen tree has blocked the only remaining exit route other than the malfunctioning elevator. Father and son are trapped in the basement. Austin attempts to call for help using his cell phone, but there is no signal. They decide to head to the office to use the landline phone. After securing the door, Tommy attempts to contact the police via telephone, only to lose the line unexpectedly. Amidst the chaos, they hear the distinct sound of a bell coming from behind the door, the same type of bell they tie to corpses to confirm their decease. Austin cautiously peers through a gap in the door and witnesses one of the missing bodies standing there. The corpse aggressively attempts to breach the door, prompting them to hastily barricade it with a cupboard. Once the ringing and pounding ceases, Austin cautiously assesses the situation and ensures no one is present outside. Convinced that Jane Doe's corpse is the catalyst for the bizarre occurrences, they resolve to cremate her remains. Hastening back to the autopsy room, they find Jane Doe's lifeless body still lying motionless in its original position. Tommy promptly sets fire to Jane Doe's body, but the flames spread rapidly, reaching the ceiling of the room. Desperate to prevent the entire room from engulfing in flames, they scramble to extinguish the fire. To their astonishment, Jane Doe's corpse remains unscathed. Suddenly, they hear a sound indicating that the elevator is functioning again. Without hesitation, they rush towards it, wielding an axe as a precautionary measure against any unforeseen events. Arriving in front of the elevator, they anxiously await its doors to open. Within the darkness, they find themselves confronted by an ominously pitch black morgue hallway. The ominous sound of a bell reverberates through the dark hallway, intensifying their urgency as they hastily press the elevator button, hoping for a swift opening. As the approaching bell sound grows nearer and nearer, the elevator doors finally part, allowing Austin to pull his father inside. Unfortunately, their relief is short-lived as they encounter a problem when attempting to close the elevator door. The doors refuse to shut completely, rendering them unable to ascend to the top floor. The haunting sound of the bell persists, drawing closer to the entrance of the elevator. Overwhelmed with panic, Tommy seizes an axe and strikes down the figure standing before the door, convinced it is one of the resurrected bodies. As the bell ceases its toll, Austin exits the elevator only to discover Emma's lifeless body lying motionless. The realization that he has unintentionally taken Emma's life leaves Tommy devastated. After this, they are convinced that Jane Doe's corpse is preventing them from uncovering the truth about the cause of her death. Determined, they resolve to return to the autopsy room and devise a plan to put an end to Jane Doe's reign of terror. Austin proceeds to dissect Jane Doe's skull, extracting a sample of her brain tissue cells before carefully suturing it back together. After conducting thorough tests, Tommy deduces that Jane Doe's brain tissue cells remain active, providing evidence that she somehow still possesses signs of life. Austin proceeds to examine the symbols on the cloth that was discovered inside Jane Doe's stomach. He discovers that the symbols correspond to Leviticus verse 2027 and the number 1693, which is believed to represent the year. Tommy retrieves the holy book of Leviticus from the bookshelf and opens it to the page containing verse 2027, which imposes the death penalty for witches. This reminds him of the historical context that in 1693, a large-scale witch trial took place in Salem. Tommy speculates that Jane Doe may be from the 17th century, explaining why her identity could not be determined by the police. He further concludes that Jane Doe may be seeking revenge for being wrongfully executed as a witch in the past or could have been a witch herself. After uncovering this crucial information, the bell rings once again, 
and the missing bodies attempt to force their way into the autopsy room. Austin desperately tries to hold the door shut, realizing that their situation is deteriorating rapidly. Tommy then approaches Jane Doe's corpse and attempts to establish a connection with her, recognizing that she is technically still alive and simply needs to be communicated with. Tommy offers himself as a sacrifice to Jane Doe, pleading for her not to harm Austin. Shortly after Tommy gives his consent, he feels his ankles and wrists shatter, mirroring the wounds on Jane Doe's corpse. As Tommy's wounds manifest, it becomes apparent that the injuries on Jane Doe's corpse are beginning to heal. Tommy experiences a pain in his lungs, coinciding with the wounds on Jane Doe's body from the autopsy miraculously healing, with the spilled blood being drawn back into her body. Tommy's eyes turn gray, while Jane Doe's eyes clarify. Overwhelmed by suffering, Tommy implores Austin to end his torment and requests that he be killed. Succumbing to a powerful compulsion, the elderly man seizes a knife and proceeds to sever his own tongue, completing the ritual. Austin, filled with sorrow and grief, reluctantly stabs his father in the chest. In the midst of his anguish, Austin notices that the lights have been restored and the radio is once again functioning normally. Suddenly, he hears a voice calling his name from outside, believing it to be the policeman who delivered Jane Doe's body. Hastily rushing to seek help, Austin reaches the door but finds it still obstructed. In a perplexing turn of events, the voice of the cop fades away, replaced by the same haunting song that played during Jane Doe's autopsy. Gripped by panic and fear, Austin hears the sound of the bell from downstairs and turns to investigate. He does not find anything, but as he turns around, he sees the ghostly apparition of his father's lifeless body standing before him. Overwhelmed with shock, he stumbles over the railing and plummets to his death. The following day, the police arrive at Tommy's residence and are astounded by the discovery of the bodies of Tommy and Austin. The crime scene mirrors the eeriness and peculiarities of the initial scene where Jane Doe's body was found. Additionally, they note that Jane Doe's body remains in the same condition as when it was brought to Tommy's house for the autopsy. Jane Doe's body is subsequently relocated to another location for further examination. The film concludes with a scene inside an ambulance transporting Jane Doe's body, as the radio inside the vehicle plays the same haunting song that Austin and Tommy heard during their encounter with Jane Doe's body. We then see a slight movement in the body's big toe. Subscribe for more videos like this, leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.